The honest truth is I see self-defenders use a firearm in self-defense often as just a noisemaker effectively. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Chile. Simply Safe is incredibly effective, reliable home security that will make sure your home is safe. If you've been worried about safety but putting off dealing with it, you don't have to wait another minute. Simply Safe makes it really easy to secure your home. I ordered it online and they delivered it right to my house and I set it up myself in under an hour. From there, your home is professionally monitored 24-7. If anything happens, they'll make sure the police get called. They've got sensors to cover every window, every room, every door, plus lots of great extras like water sensors, temperature sensors, and HD cameras. It's all really easy to use, and you get around-the-clock protection for just 50 cents a day with no contracts. They've even won U.S. News and World Report's Best Overall Home Security of 2020. This is the system that I trust to protect my home and my family in my home. I tested the sensors, the system works, it is good stuff and I recommend it highly. Check them out at simplysafe.com slash ASP. Car's pulling out of a home here and the lady here's an off-duty officer. And what you're gonna see here is she's gonna close her gate, which is a manually operated gate. So she does have her phone in her hand, but look, she is paying attention to her world. And what you're gonna see, she's trying to lock the gate. Watch from the left to the right as a white car shows up that she is definitely paying attention to. Dude's gonna jump out with a firearm, but she has one of her own, starts putting shots towards him, has a malfunction there, but as soon as she starts putting shots his way, he starts running. He does wing a couple shots back towards her as she's trying to get two hands on the gun with a phone in her hand, and he is then going to do his best Jesse Owens impression there, jump back in the car and head off. You're going to see her now take a big, deep breath. She was unharmed, and that's where this one ends. Pretty insane. I actually have a question for you out of today's video, and that is what lesson, what impact has these narrative videos had on your understanding of self-defense? What surprised you the most? What is it that when we see real-life self-defense, you went, wow, I didn't think it really goes like that? Let me know in the comments. I'm gonna be in here all day moderating and talking with folks. So please let me know what your thoughts are. So I love the fact that she is prepared and she is carrying her firearm off duty. And I think that every good, sane, sober, moral person who can carry a firearm should do so. It is an incredible force multiplier. I'm not saying it's the only way to defend yourself. I'm not saying that everyone in the universe should, but I do believe that all good, sane, sober, moral people who have the ability to carry a firearm should. It's a part of personal protection, like wearing your seatbelt or keeping a fire extinguisher in your kitchen. It just makes sense. Now, bigger than that though, she was paying attention to her world, and that's probably the biggest thing here, is that you notice as she gets out of her car that she has her cell phone with her, but notice that she is not engrossed in her cell phone. I see so many people, they've got their headphones in, they've got their face stuck in their phone, they're not paying attention to anything in the world. Now, she has to get out here in order to close her gate. I do think if you have these kinds of gated systems, having an automatic door on it does make you safer because she could have just hit the door and then been gone and not been victimized. But not always possible for people, but it would be something that I'd recommend if you can. Now let's watch how much time she spends paying attention to her phone. She does look down at her phone here, but in only about two seconds she is back looking around at her world. That's part of paying attention. If you have to see something with your phone, somebody's texting you or there's some piece of information that you need with that when you're in a transitional space like this, then you wanna have a timer in your head. One Chicago, two Chicago, take a look around. One Chicago, two Chicago, take a look around. And you don't always have to say that, but it's a good thing to practice to say, wait a minute, I don't wanna get engrossed in my phone. And she does an excellent job of that here, of seeing what's going on around her, not being so focused on the task that's right in front of her that she doesn't see what else is available. And then you notice here, you can see that, you know, this is the, the news source that has blurred her face, but she is definitely looking to her left. So she's identified, oh, there's a car coming. Now, of course, is a car coming out of the ordinary? No, but when she's in a transitional space, she, she wants to be able to say, let me identify that. There's something in my environment that I want to identify and see if it's good or if it's a difficult thing for me that I need to respond to. So because of that, then she keeps paying attention to it and tracks it. Now, she sees something inside this car that is gonna make her start her draw because right here is where she starts her draw. Notice that she's in a non-traditional position, so she's got her cell phone in her left hand, her right hand is up with her shoulder back behind her trying to lock this lock. So it's a non-traditional start position for sure, but the biggest thing is that her go signal is visual. Now, most times on the range, we're operating off of auditory signals, but 
In real gunfights, your go signal is visual, and she gets that here and starts going for her gun. Now, notice here how close tenths of seconds are, that her draw here from this really weird position was about 2.1 seconds, and that two-second draw to first shot is why we talk about that from a national standard for concealed carriers, because look at what the bad guy's doing here, is that he has his gun up and is threatening her with it, and in a matter of just split seconds, these this is how fast gunfights are won and lost. So, the faster you can be out of your holster, the better. Now, she did two seconds and a little bit more. Faster, another half second would have been better for her. Second thing that I see pretty significantly here, she had a malfunction. So that first shot went off, but I noticed that the fact that she was first and even the first to get a shot off, that in institutes the FIBSA factor, right? Fudge, I'm being shot at and our dude decides to move. And that changed his behavior. Even the fact that there was a gunshot, oh no, I'm at risk here, means that he started moving, but she had a malfunction. You better be able to quickly solve malfunction problems and you really want to really uh, vet your firearm to know that it's not going to malfunction when you need it. Next thing I wanna get here is notice that she did miss. They've they haven't found this guy yet. He didn't show up at any hospitals. I don't think she hit him. So, so notice this second shot she's getting out. Number one, she's only got one hand on the gun because she hasn't dropped her cell phone. But number two, much more difficult shot than her first one. One of the standards and one of the things that we say here all the time on the channel is that your first shot is almost always your best shot. So you got to make that one count. Bad guy's going to do things that's going to make it harder for you to get him the next time. So make that first shot count if at all possible. Next thing here, of course, I really want you to get two hands on the gun. I really want you to, to drop what's in your support hand. People don't do that all the time. And in particular here, she's got her mobile device. And, and because she has her mobile phone, she's like, geez, I don't wanna drop my phone. And, and really a lot of our psyche teaches us, don't drop your phone. However, in this case, just like many others, shooting with two hands is a far preferable solution. And so drop what's in your hands. I know it's your mobile device, but your life is worth infinitely more than your phone is. So drop the stupid thing, put two hands on the gun. Also notice here, she's scared. And so she's moving backwards and firing kind of over her shoulder. When it's time to shoot, get a good firing position because your best cover is fire superiority. Now, I do like the fact here that she got behind the car and got a little bit of distance behind the car, but notice that she doesn't still drop the phone and that puts that phone in her hand while she's trying to grip the gun with both hands, which fouls that two-handed draw and de definitely contributed to the fact that she didn't hit anything here. She did not put a good shot on this bad guy and I think that she absolutely needed to. Now, as to whether she needed to shoot this last time, we can't see what he's doing in that moment so I don't know but I do think she's got a good stable shooting platform here but the fouled hands and the fouled grip was her biggest problem again drop what's in your hands and use what you have available to shoot well now thankfully he bugged out and good on her for saving her life the actions that she took were enough also want you to notice the adrenaline dump happened afterwards. And I think this is really important. A lot of people think, oh no, what's gonna happen in that adrenalized state? Well, that adrenaline is actually going to help you in that moment to focus and to do some things. It's gonna hurt your, your fine motor skills and those kinds of things. But it's afterwards when the cortisol effects take over that you really start hyperventilating and those kinds of things. So you really wanna learn what's that aftermath position. This is one of the reasons I want you to have a good quality holster that stays open so that you can put that gun away safely while you're, you have that elevated heart rate and your hands are shaking from the cortisol and the after effects of the adrenaline dump. And, and recognize that they are going to happen and you should be ready for them to happen and know that they're gonna happen so you can safely put your firearm away, take some deep breath, do some deep breathing exercises, you know, some, some box breathing and those kinds of things. This lady did a really good job. She was paying attention to her world. That's what really saved her life. She had her firearm on her. She was able to get it out quickly and drove that guy off and won her gunfights. Think about some of the things to do the best job we can with the marksmanship so that she ends the threat more quickly, but she covered her ass.